In this video, we're gonna do the fourth project in the Arduino starter kit. And we're gonna learn some things like how to use photoresistors or phototransistors, the three color LED, which will control by pulse width modulation. So let's get to it. For the first step, we're going to go ahead and attach jumper wires from the breadboard power rails to the Arduino 5 volt and ground ports. In step two, we're going to go ahead and place the phototransistors on the breadboard. Now, you're going to need to find three of the phototransistors in your kit, and then go ahead and find three of these little frame things or the light filter that we're going to be using later. So go ahead and find those in your kit as well. Now the important thing with this phototransistor is to make sure you remember which side has the longer leg because it does matter what side of the circuit you're attaching each of the legs to. So after I put my LED through the little slit in the light filter frame, I'm going to go ahead and leave the shorter leg straight and I'm going to take the longer leg and I'm going to bend it so that with it being bent it's the same length as the shorter one. That way when I put it in the board it's not going to be tilted to one side and it will also make it easier for me to remember which side is the longer side because when I look at the two legs underneath the filter frame I can see which one is bent and which one is straight. So go ahead and bend one of your legs and place the phototransistor onto the breadboard. I'm going to go ahead and straddle the center channel of the breadboard to split both sides of the phototransistor. When you're done doing the first one, go ahead and repeat it to get the second one done and the third one done. We're going to be using three in this project. And this is what it should look like when you're done with the third one. All right, so what is a phototransistor? The phototransistor that we're going to use is pictured here on the left. It's got that clear or see-through right cylinder and two pins sticking out of it of different lengths. The way this works is that it's going to create a current that is proportional to the amount of light that the sensor picks up. If there's more light, there's going to be more current. If there's less light, it's going to see less current. Now we don't actually have a current sensor on our Arduino, so we're going to do something a little different to read this sensor. What we're going to do is we're going to add another resistor to the circuit. And what we can do is we can measure the voltage across that resistor. We're creating a voltage divider. And the way that works is that we know the resistance of the resistor and we're going to measure the voltage across it and then we can use the equation V equals IR to calculate the current. This is actually pretty common in electronics. It's called a sense resistor. Now the power requirements for this is somewhere between 3 to 15 volts direct current. And then of course you got the working temperature range right there. Now when it comes to the two pins, the side that you want to attach to the ground side of your circuit is a shorter leg and the longer leg you want to attach to the positive voltage side of your circuit. Okay, so the next step is we're going to put a jumper wire between the two power rails on the breadboard so that they're both powered with the 5 volts. Now, I'm doing this because I'm using that center channel of the breadboard to split up the two legs of the phototransistors. Now, you could easily rearrange the circuit so that it's all on one side of the breadboard and just use one of the power rails and don't need this jumper wire, but just to be able to separate the components and give it some more space between stuff on the board, I went ahead and threw this jumper wire in and used the power rail on the other side. Next, we're going to go ahead and put a jumper wire between the power rail and each of the phototransistors. We're going to connect the power rail to the longer leg, or in my case, the bent leg, so go ahead and add a jumper to each of the longer legs. The next step, we're going to go ahead and add some resistors to the other side of the phototransistors. So go ahead and find three of the 10 kilo ohm resistors. Remember that there is a color band chart to help you identify the resistors on page 41 of the book. And then we're going to go ahead and place them on the breadboard between the ground rail and the phototransistor's shorter leg. Next, we're going to go ahead and put a jumper wire between the analog in ports and the phototransistor's shorter leg. We want to make sure that one side of that jumper is at that joint between the phototransistor and the resistor, right? We're not wanting between the resistor and the ground. The other side of that jumper wire needs to be in one of the analog pins, A0, A1, or A2. 
It doesn't matter right now. When we program this thing, we're going to go ahead and make sure we write the code to specify which one's which. Next, we're going to go ahead and pull out the tricolor LED out of the kit. It's got the four pins coming out of it. You'll notice that the pins are different lengths. The different lengths of the pins are to tell you which pin is which, and so we need to make sure that we keep track of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I did before, and I'm going to bend the longer pins, try to make it even so that the LED rests flat. I'm going to essentially bend the longest pin the farthest out, the next pin not quite as far out, and then leave the two shorter pins flat. And that way I can just see by looking at it while it's in the breadboard. So go ahead and bend those and put it in the breadboard. And make sure you leave some space for the jumper wire that's going to attach to both sides. Let's go ahead and talk about this tri-color LED real quick just to give you some background information on it. Basically this is three LEDs all combined into one. You have red, green, and blue. And of course the fourth pin is for the ground. The way this works is when you create a voltage across one of the colors and ground, it lights up. So if you connect a voltage across the red pin and ground, this tri-color LED will light up with the red color. So you have separate elements for each color with a common cathode shared between the three different colors. That's how you can kind of change colors and mix colors with it, but how do you change the brightness? Normally you would think that if you had 5 volts DC, maybe if you just fed it less voltage, you could change the brightness. The problem with that is that the Arduino is not set up to do that. And so instead of varying the voltage that we send to it, we're going to do what's called pulse width modulation. Basically what pulse width modulation is, is that we change the amount of time that we're on versus the amount of time that we're off. That ratio is what we call the duty cycle. So if we have a 50% duty cycle, it's on 50% of the time and it's off 50% of the time. If we have a 75% duty cycle, it means it's on 75% of the time and it's off 25% of the time. When we switch in our duty cycle fast enough, you're not actually going to be able to see the light going on and off. However, it's going to have the effect that it looks dimmer to your eyes just by the fact that you don't have the voltage on for the full amount of time. We're going to use the pulse width modulation to vary the brightness of this tricolor LED based on what the photo transistors are picking up from the light that they're sensing. The next step is that we're going to hook up the LED's ground pin. So look in your kit and find a jumper wire to use. We're going to put a jumper wire between the three color LED ground pin, which is the longest pin, and the breadboard's ground rail. Now this is a common pin and it's going to be shared by all three of the colors. Now LED stands for light emitting diode and a diode is something that only allows the flow of current in one direction. And so it's really important to make sure that you have the ground pin connected to the ground side of the circuit. So this step is important. You don't want to switch it and have this on the other side, on the high side and all the other pins on the low side because then it's not going to allow any current to flow. In the next step, we're going to place some resistors between the LED and the high side or the power side of the circuit. This is pretty typical when dealing with lights and things like that. A lot of times they don't have enough resistance that you can risk burning them up or damaging your circuit if you don't have some sort of resistance in the circuit with the light. And so in this particular circuit, we're going to place 220 ohm resistors between the LED and the, and the power side. And of course, since we're wanting to control the LED, we're not going to be hooking the high side up to the power rail. We're going to be sending that to it on a different jumper wire from the Arduino. We're going to do that in the next step. But for this step, go ahead and find the 220 ohm resistors in your kit. And then go ahead and make sure that one side of the resistor is on the same row as the LED. And then make sure the other side of the resistor is in its own separate rail. I'm going to go ahead and put mine across the valley in the middle of the breadboard. In the next step, we're going to go ahead and put that jumper wire between the 220 ohm resistor and the digital PWM pins on number 9, 10, and 11 on the Arduino. Now you want to make sure that the jumper wire is not on the LED side of the resistor or else it's just going to bypass the resistor. As for the other side, you'll see that there's a little squiggly next to the numbers 9, 10, and 11. That little squiggly is supposed to signify to you that those are PWM channels on your Arduino. So go ahead and connect to those channels. It doesn't matter which one right now because we can just change which pin is which color when we program it. 
In this step, we're going to go ahead and put color filters over the photo transistors. We're trying to filter out to make it so that they detect a specific color of light. So go ahead and find these little gels or these little filters or polarizers or whatever they're called. And we're going to go ahead and bend them in half a little bit and put both sides into the holes of these little filter holder frames. Again, it doesn't matter which one at this point. We can just go ahead and fix it in the software code when we get to that point. All right, so that's the end of setting up the hardware for this project. Let's go ahead and plug in the USB and get to programming our Arduino. Before I plug it into the computer, I do like to disconnect the power rails, just at least until I have it programmed so that I didn't accidentally leave a previous project's program on the Arduino and have it start acting funny on me. So I'd recommend you do the same. Just unplug the power wires before you plug in the USB. So go ahead and find the Arduino icon on your desktop and double click it open. And we can go ahead and open the pre-written code and I'll go over it with you. To open that, go ahead and click file. And the pop-up that appears after that, go ahead and click examples. In the pop-up that appears after that, find starter kit and then find the project for color mixing lamp and click that open. And of course, this is code that's in the public domain, so you are free to use it. And it comes built into Arduino just for that purpose. It's time to go ahead and start programming the Arduino for our project. We're going to do this in three parts. The first part is that we're going to define and declare all of our variables. The second part is the setup function that runs once every time you turn on the Arduino or hit the reset button. And the third part is the loop. That's the thing that just repeats over and over and over again while it has power. So the first part, let's talk about some of these variables. The variables that specify which color is on which pin for the LED. Also, which color is on which pin for the three phototransistors. And then we're going to use some values as well. Three of them, obviously, we have three colors for the values that we're going to write to the LED, right? We're going to send it to the LED, and that's how we control it. Then, of course, we have the three variables for the value that we're reading off of each of the phototransistors, right? This is our sensor measurement in. And so for both our command and our measurements coming out, go ahead and just make those equal to zero. That'll be the initial condition. And then as we read in measurements, the sensor value will change. And as we send different commands, the actual red value, green value, blue value will change as well. Now, when we set up the hardware, I said that it doesn't matter which color is on which pin. However, the code is originally set up with a specific color on each pin. And so we're just going to change this for however we have it set up. And you might have your setup differently than mine. So you're going to have to look at your circuit as well to just make sure which one is on which pin. So let's start with the LED pins. So it looks like the way I have mine up, set up is that on the LED, the green pin is going to be on pin 9. The blue pin is going to be on pin 10 and the red pin is going to be on pin 11. Now you'll see that the defaults are different. So I'm going to go ahead and modify the code so that the red LED pin has a value of 11 and the blue LED pin has a value of 10. And this will just fix it so that I'm sending commands to the right colored pins. Okay, now let's take a look at the photo transistors. Looking at my circuit, it looks like I have red on A2, green on A1, and blue on A0 which is the reverse order for the default code. So let's go ahead and change it. The red pin, I'm going to type in A2. Green has A1, so that'll stay the same. And the blue is going to have A0. I just went ahead and fixed the code so that my different pins on my LED matched for color, as well as my phototransistor or photoresistor, those colors match the pins as well. So now we have all of our variables set up. Let's go ahead and work with the setup function, which runs once when you start it, whether that's powering the Arduino on or hitting the reset button. The first thing that the code does is it sets up the serial monitor um, with a baud rate of 9600. If you're not going to print to the screen, you probably don't have to worry about this part right here. So you could leave, leave this off if you didn't want to look at the monitor. Uh, if you are trying to hook it up and look at the monitor, make sure that the rate that you have set here matches the rate that you have set up on your serial monitor. The next thing is we want to set up our digital pins as output. And that's what we're going to do with these three lines of code. We're just telling it that, hey, this green LED pin is an output, not an input. Same with the red and the blue. That way we can send commands out to the LED and the Arduino isn't just trying to read in the values and think it's some sort of sensor. So now we have our setup routine done. Let's go down to the loop routine. First thing that we do is we read in the values off of the photo transistors or photoresistors. So we're just going to go ahead and use the analog read command. 
The default code has a slight delay between reading all of them just to give it a little bit of time in between to settle. So after we read in the value, the next part of the code is to print out those values that you read in to that serial monitor we were talking about before. This is just going to let you see what each of the different color values are that the sensors or the phototransistors are reading in. And so as it's running, it'll keep printing out this line of code with all the values on it and you can see what your Arduino is picking up. What we're doing next is we're going to just take the value that we read in from the phototransistors and we're going to send that command out to the LED to try and replicate it. However, there's a difference in the size of memory for what we read in versus what we send out. We can read in a 10-bit number that's 10 different places of either a 0 or a 1. However, when we send out a command, we can only use 8 bits. That's why we're dividing by 4 to convert our 10-bit number into an 8-bit number. That way we keep it in the right range so that the maximum that we can sense is going to be the maximum brightness we can have. If you didn't do it this way and you just left off the divide by 4, then you run that risk. If you read in a number higher than the maximum that you can send as a command, it's just going to saturate and you're not going to see any difference between when you first get above that value that you can send versus to the maximum value that you can read in. So this just helps map the sizes so that they're the same. Next part of code also prints out to the serial monitor, just letting you know what your new command going out to the LED is going to be. And then finally, the code is going to end with actually sending out that command to the different pins on the LED. Each of the different colors has its own pin and its own command. And so we have to do this analog write three times so that we send each pin its own command. And then that's the end of our loop. So what happens after these three lines of code is that it will start again at the top of the loop. And it's just going to keep doing that loop over and over and over again until you take away its power. And that's it. That's the code for this project. So once you've made all your changes, the next step is to click the check mark in the top left to hit verify just to make sure that there's no issues with the code. And if your code verifies with no issues, then you can go ahead and click the arrow to upload it onto your Arduino. You can go ahead and plug back in the power wires and start running the project. All right, we're done programming it and putting the software onto the Arduino. Let's go ahead and give her a test drive. So plug in the power cables that you disconnected before, and then you can grab some stuff to block light. I grabbed some of the uh, paper from a previous project so that I can block out the different lights on the different phototransistors to try and see the multicolor LED change to the particular color that I had the light hitting. Now it's not the best. The way that these polarizers or filters are on it, it really lets light in through the sides as well. And so you kind of see a mix of all colors. But as I block out light from two of the sensors, you can kind of see the LED take a particular color. Cool. We have a functioning color mixing lamp now where it detects what color of light is being hit and it tries to replicate that. All right, that's the end of the video. I'm going to go ahead and end it here. If you like what you saw, you know what to do. Just do the YouTube things. I'll see you in the next video.